Should you use Expo for a React Native project in 2023 or should you use the traditional React Native CLI? In this video, I will show you all the pros and cons for using Expo. Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from galaxies.dev and before we dive into the topic, make sure you hit the subscribe button because it's the easiest way to show a little bit of appreciation for today's video. If you start your React Native journey, you're gonna encounter one question right in the beginning of setting up your environment. And the question is, should you use the ExpoGo Quick Start or the React Native CLI Quick Start? This is like a crossroad and this can be very challenging for a beginner who's starting with React Native. So let's explore this. If you're picking the React Native CLI quick start. This is pretty much like the traditional way of starting React Native applications. You set up your development environment with all the tools, with Ruby, uh, with probably Xcode on a Mac, and then you run the initial command to generate a new project. And later on, you kind of start React Native, uh, the Metro bundler, and run your application on iOS and Android. This is the traditional way of creating React Native applications. It involves later linking different packages. You have to control your native iOS was an Android project and you're just responsible for pretty much everything that happens. On the other hand, we get Expo. Expo is a way to quickly run your application uh, in something called Expo Go. So if you're using Expo Go, this is an application you can install on Android, iOS, and even on the simulator. If you then initialize a new Expo project and run Expo Start, you get a QR code that you can scan and it will immediately bring up your application on a native device in here, which is pretty amazing. If you see this the first time, you're like, wow, I'm the god of mobile applications. But overall, Expo is an open source framework for apps that run natively on Android, iOS, and the web. And Expo brings together the best and yada yada yada. So to me, Expo is actually like a suite of different tools because there's really a lot included. We got the Expo SDK, which allows us to use things like the accelerator, application, battery, camera, and so many more packages easily in our application by just installing them with Expo install something and then you can use this native feature or package with Expo. Additionally, Expo has native modules. We're gonna come back to this later because this was a very hard objective in the past and you can now easily create your own native modules with Expo. Additionally, we got Expo pre-built. We're gonna talk about that in a second. We got the Expo CLI, which is pretty helpful to run our application or add packages or build the app. And we got, of course, the Expo Go app, which we've seen before, which allows us to preview our application. And finally, there's also the Expo application service, EAS, which helps us to build and submit our application in the cloud. So we don't even need a Mac at some point to build an iOS application, for example. So that means if you opt into using Expo for your React Native application, you get access to all of these things. Now, the question as a beginner is, of course I want all of that. Why shouldn't I use it? Well, there are certain limitations with Expo and the workflow is somewhat different from the React Native CLI. And in the past, people brought up a lot of problems. So let's go through that. For example, uh, to Two years ago, Johnny brought up the problem of not having the ability to copy to the clipboard and not having the ability to open other applications from your own application. Well, looks like this is solved. There's an Expo clipboard package and there's also Expo linking available, which allows us to easily open other applications from our Expo React Native application. One year ago, Esteban brought up the problem of push notifications. And well, we now got push notifications with Expo and there are also other very very popular packages like OneSignal, which has Expo integration. So push notifications, also not a big deal anymore. In-app purchases was always a challenging topic and it kinda still is because the development of Expo in-app purchases is currently paused, but there's a great alternative. And I know most people are actually using something like RevenueCat or Glassfy to actually manage their in-app purchases and subscriptions. And RevenueCat, for example, has an Expo integration. So it is certainly possible to have in-app purchases or subscriptions with Expo. A very common objection that you will find in many videos, like in this from Ben uh, about three years ago, is about native modules. So Ben, for example, wanted to use something like vector icons with React Native, and it was simply not possible back then to 
integrate custom native modules, you only had the Expo APIs. Well, today you can create your own native modules with Expo. There's a guide on doing this. So you're pretty much free to create every possible native module that you want for your Expo application. So this is also a thing of the past. Finally, there was an objection about ejecting Expo from your application. So if in the past at some point you noticed that, well, probably I don't want Expo anymore, you could eject Expo from your project. But it felt really like a pain in the backside to go through that process. I did it myself. It can really break your application and you're left with a lot of puzzle pieces. However, what they did at Expo is actually eject is a thing of the past and the solution today is called pre-built. And with Expo pre-built, what you do is you run this command npx Expo pre-built and it will generate an Xcode and an Android project in your React Native application. And guess what? You can then manage that native project right in there. So that is a pre-built and it works pretty flawless. You can then run that local pre-built directly on your Android and iOS devices and it is a great replacement for Expo Eject. So although most things that were brought up in uh, the past videos about problems with Expo are now gone, there are still open issues. So you can check out this board at expo.kenny.io and you're gonna see in-app purchase is still the most upvoted feature request because it's not completely natively working with Expo and there are other elements. So I would go through that list and check out if there are certain things that your application definitely heavily relies on that are not yet implemented implemented and in those cases it might be actually the case that the React Native CLI is preferred for your project. However, with the different Expo workflows, you actually get the best of both worlds. So there's the Manage workflow and there's the Bear workflow. And by default, you're using the Manage workflow with Expo, which means you can use the Expo Go app, you don't need to manage native projects yourself, and this is very convenient for people getting started, but also myself, I've used quite a lot of tools for building native applications and I was kind of, yeah, I was actually kind of surprised how easy it was to use Expo Go and how fast it was. And it felt kind of convenient and I really enjoyed the developer experience. But if at some point Expo Manage Workflow is not enough for you and you want more control, you can go for the Bear Workflow. With the Bear Workflow, it is pretty much the Expo Eject or Pre-Build today, which means you generate the native projects, you can customize things in either Expo code or an Android Studio and apply changes to the plist or the Gradle or the configuration or anything you want. And with that bare workflow, you have some more control. You don't only use JavaScript because you might need some Swift, you might need some Kotlin, but you can actually still use all the other things from Expo. So really, you get the best of both worlds. And I think this is a pretty cool thing because Expo seems to never lock you in today. You can still opt out with a pre-built, but but overall, this is pretty, pretty impressive in 2023. On top of that, there are some additional benefits for using Expo. For example, for everyone getting started, it is really that easy. You have, don't need any kind of knowledge about Xcode, Android Studio, native tools. You just write your React Native code with JavaScript, TypeScript, use the Expo Go app. You can even build your app in the cloud and you can become a native mobile developer and release a native app without kind of having to ever touch a native project. Additionally, I found it pretty cool that my application runs on the device without even being connected because it serves through Expo Go in a local server. So that was another plus for me. And as well for people who don't have a Mac, you can now actually build your iOS application with the EAS in the cloud and then deploy to your device. So that means if you want an iOS application, you don't need to have a Mac. Yes, debugging is a bit more complicated and challenging in that case. And I would certainly not recommend that for like really developing an app, but it is to some degree possible. And on top of that, you get some cool more benefits if you're actually using EAS, because with EAS, you can let your app be built in the cloud. And from there, you can actually submit it to the Apple App Store and submit it to the Google Play Store. Um, so you don't need to do this locally. You don't need to sign your application locally. Um, and all of that is possible with the EAS. And on top of that, you even get access to updates, over the air updates, which means you can update your application without going through the uh, review process of Apple and uh, Android, because you're just updating JavaScript, styling, images, whatever, and you can do this over the air. And finally, there is also a way to develop for the web with Expo, which is of course very enticing. So you kind of came from React 
web to React Native and now we're going from React Native to build a website again. I don't know if you really need this, but it is an interesting way to really just have one code base. But spoiler, watch till the end. I'm gonna tell you another way how you can reuse your code base for native. So let's answer the question, should you use Expo for your React Native application in 2023? I asked this question on Twitter and most of the people, and there were quite a lot of people actually replying to this, said, yes, Expo is epic. If I look at this, there are a few in the beginning to I replied to, I don't like the developer experience, most people say yes, 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 it's amazing, definitely, 100%, no question, yes, yes, using it since years, yes, it's the best, 100%, yes, yes, you <laughs> see all of this. So, like, 95% of people saying yes, go with Expo, and I would completely agree to that, because if your application is... A traditional application and you also maybe don't know upfront what you're gonna do yes just go with Expo you can later still use pre-built or something else but you can get started immediately and very fast with Expo if you know that your application requires certain functionalities that are not yet implemented by Expo and it's gonna be very hard to add them or if you're using tons of native modules and I uh, need to write a lot of custom things probably go with a react native CLI if you really know about that upfront and the challenges but otherwise it's definitely a yes for using Expo with React Native. Now one more thing before you leave off and that is there are actually more ways to <laughs> reuse your React skills. This is not very popular in the React world and I actually don't know why but you can use Capacitor to wrap your whole web application written in React into a native application and access native device functionality and also easily build a native project. You don't get the comfort of expo and not seeing a native project but to be honest at some point it is actually pretty easy to just manage an xcode and android studio project so if you want another way to really reuse 100 percent of your react code go check out capacitor i've got tons of videos on this channel about capacitor with react with next.js and also how you can add the ionic framework as a ui framework to your application because then you can really completely use your existing react web skills to build native applications applications. And on your way out, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button to get notified about all the upcoming explain videos, tutorial, live streams, and everything going on on this channel. And check out galaxies.dev, which is my online platform to help you with all the questions about modern web and mobile development. So I'm going to catch you in the next video. And until then, of course, happy coding.